welcome to BGCSE Biology lesson 2. So today we are looking at photosynthesis. So when you're talking about photosynthesis, this is a process in which green plants manufacture their own food using light energy from the sun, which is trapped by a green pigment called chlorophyll. Remember when you're talking about chloroplast, we said they contain a pigment called chlorophyll, which is capable of trapping light energy. So in order for this process to take place, these are the raw materials which are needed. There is carbon dioxide, there is water, and there is light. So it works with these three raw materials. If one of them is not there, then the process cannot take place. They work together. Now, the question is, how plants acquire these raw materials? So if you look at this illustration here, it shows a plant and then the movement of these raw materials into a plant. There is a sun here and then the sun produces some light rays. So like I said, green plants have a pigment called chlorophyll in their leaves. So this chlorophyll, it traps light energy in the form of photons for photosynthesis. Now let's talk about covered light. Let's talk about carbon dioxide. How do plants acquire carbon dioxide? So if you look at these leaves here, they show the movement of carbon dioxide from the environment into the leaves. So you find that there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere compared to the plant. And then there is a concentration gradient which is going to be created because of those differences. And then as a result, we have carbon dioxide moving from the environment into the leaves of a plant and then it enters through the stomata. And then once in the leaves, then it means it is available for photosynthesis. And then the next raw material will be water. So these are the roots of a plant and then you can see the movement of water from the soil into these roots and then water will move all the way up until it reaches the leaf. So you find that there is a higher concentration of water in the soil than in the plant. And then as a result, we have a water potential gradient at the root. And then water molecules move from the soil into the plant through the process of osmosis. And then they will pass through the root hairs then they will reach the source of the cortex and then finally water will reach the xylem vessel. We know that the xylem vessel is responsible for the transport of water. So water will move through the xylem vessel and go all the way up. Remember when we were talking about the structure of the leaf, there was that vascular bundle that had some xylem vessel. So the xylem vessel will run all the way from the stem, transport water up until it reaches the leaf. So even in the leaf, we have a xylem vessel which is responsible for the transportation of water and make it available for photosynthesis. So once all these raw materials are available, we have your carbon dioxide, you have your water, you have your light. The question is, now what happens during photosynthesis? So if you look at this diagram here, this is a chloroplast. It shows a chloroplast. So we are going to have light energy breaking down water molecule into oxygen and hydrogen. This oxygen, it is going to pass through the air spaces and then escape through the stomata to the environment. And then the remaining hydrogen, it will combine with carbon dioxide and then it will form a sugar called glucose. This is the formula for glucose. And then as these glucose molecules are accumulating in the plant, in order for them uh, not to disturb the osmotic balance, they are going to be converted into starch. So when the sugars are in this form, there is no way they can disturb the osmotic balance of a cell. And then the plant can just continue with other processes. Now let's talk about the uses of this starch or glucose in the plant. You know that if you eat your fruits, they always taste sweet. This is because of this sugar from photosynthesis. And then if you look at this sugar, it has some carbons. And we know that carbon is important for structural formation. So part of this carbon goes into the formation of structures. And then we know that during respiration also, when now you are releasing energy, you, you also use glucose. So this glucose can be used for respiration. And then also part of it goes for storage for future use. For example, you find that if you, when winter approaches, you are going to have your plants now loosen their leaves. And now you may wonder, where do they get glucose for energy harvesting? So they will use the one that has been stored all this time to release energy. That's all I had for you for this lesson. See you again in the next lesson.